Paulina. Hi, Megan. Um, what book are we here to talk about today? Today we are talking about Weapons of Mass Destruction by Kathy O'Neill. Uh, Paulina, you want to give us a little summary of this book? Sure. Um, this book uh, impacts how uh, <laughs> it impacts a lot of things. Okay, one second here. <laughs> all the impacts. You just throw this book at people, it's got all the impacts. Um, <laughs> I'm saving that. That's going in the cut at the very end. <laughs> yeah, we can. Oh, gosh. Yeah. AI reads blooper reel. Yes. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, okay. So, yeah. Uh, Weapons of Math Destruction um, is a book that explores, it was actually one of the first books that explores the impacts that the idea of big data have on our daily lives. And one of the big divides that Kathy O'Neill identifies in big data is that basically if you have enough money, aka if you're a rich person, you don't get processed by an algorithm. If you are middle class or lower than that, um, or most likely if you are um, a person of color or any other uh, minoritized person in the United States, your data is going to be processed by an algorithm that is built to basically oppress you, even though the people who built it might not think so. What was one cool thing that you took away from this book, Megan? I'm not sure if what I took away from it, I don't know if I would consider it cool. Um, this book uh, solidified a lot of things for me that I was already pretty terrified about with where our modern world is heading. Having this stuff written down uh, so that I could see how some of these algorithms work um, was, I mean, that was a cold dagger in my heart. Um, the I was aware already of some of the issues with um, unethical inputs and the way that design can sometimes end up uh, biased and horrible um, because of uh, a, a lack of understanding of the, the variables going in. Um, but to see the way it was systematized um, to oppress people, that's, that's hard. That's hard to, to uh, that's hard to rationalize to yourself why why we continue to participate in a system like that. I think I'm just about to make this a socialist rant. I'll stop. Paulina, can we just throw the book at someone? I think that actually um, that point that you've made right there of um, socialist rants and throwing this book at people is my maybe one of the ways that I would actually sell it to new readers. Um, yeah. Particularly because um, she points out in a really cool way just the sort of basic underlying things. And she also uses a framework, this concept of a weapon of math destruction or a WMD, drawing on, you know, as folks, as, as someone who kind of grew up in the Bush era, this is a, a word that kind of still draws me in and catches my attention just because of the sheer sort of cultural weight that that term had when I was growing up. Yeah. Um, but she also is extremely like rigorous and specific with that. It's something that, you know, we can joke about tossing the book at people or going on socialist rants. And those are at least, um, hypothetically, uh, not what people are going to listen to. Um, so she doesn't do that. She doesn't just go on sort of like, uh, you know, polemics or whatever. She actually uses this very specific rigid system with a definition for what a weapon of math destruction is, and then goes through and systematically compares well-known algorithms to this thing to basically use clear logic to demonstrate how it is harmful. Um, and I think, though, that in that there are very obvious um, sort of political leanings, but I think it's also just a very clear um, and impactful book and can be seen as kind of metaphorically throwing things at you um, because it it's just, it's clear and it's obvious. It's just like, this thing is not opaque. We can't see it. It doesn't take impact in, inputs to change. 
and you know it has these effects and so it's very clear with that and i think that um it's something that's kind of difficult for people to argue out of when she gives you this you know i'm basic she's basically using a verbal algorithm actually to evaluate other algorithms and demonstrate how specifically it is undercutting people's lives and threatening democracy um and i think that if people genuinely care about it um genuinely care about things like democracy and equality um her book is really easy to digest and understand and actually follow her logics um her logics for um so uh that's you know metaphoric metaphorical socialist ranting and book throwing um is i don't think a bad way to sell this particular uh book to interested readers i um, think we both had strong feelings about some things within this text yeah um, um i think though so that's a lot of stuff from this book that's about data generally how do you view um outcomes of this work relating back to archaeological data yeah um one of the things that i think is very interesting in this is the idea of um and, and we talked about it a little bit a minute ago um the idea of, of transparent and opaque um uses of data and a concern that i've had for a while um that sort of touches on some of the issues in this book is is the the reliance that archaeology is starting to have on black box technology um and and how especially in education how that's playing out how we're teaching new archaeologists what we do in the field and um it used to be that everyone knew how to draw by hand um, or they knew how to um, measure various things. They knew how to use, you know, uh, the transit and all of all the basic stuff that you put your face in and and then it, you know, you you have to actually pay attention while you do it. Um, and now we have a lot more reliance on um, on software packages. That do stuff for us and i don't have a problem with software packages i think that in terms of statistical analysis these are really important i my concern that sort of comes into this with this book is that where we're using things that we don't we don't know how it works we just put our our blind trust that this program or this piece of software or this machine will give us good data and we don't we the general archaeological uh community we don't have the, the data skills to be able to tell if what we're pulling out is really good or not um and i think that that we don't understand these algorithms uh and so that's that's my concern um with this uh how would you say you think it connects best with archaeology? Um, one point from the book that I think uh, relates back to archaeology more specifically um, is her exploration of the concept of proxies. Um, mm -hmm. So the idea that you are collecting data that's not directly about the phenomenon that you want to track, but you're collecting what you believe are adjacent qualities that will allow you to explore that question. Um, and while none of the examples she uses are archaeology specific, um, archaeology relies on a lot of proxy data to say things about the past. Um, and I think that it's just an important reminder whenever we're doing archaeological uh, work is to really examine our proxies and see if they actually relate back to what we're intending to study. Um, so, you know, um, if we're looking at pollen grains, are they ones that actually relate to the questions we have or is it tracking something else uh, because of other other things in the environment? Um, and so, and not to say that archaeology doesn't use good proxies, but to just take that time to reevaluate and assess them because we can make a lot of assumptions um, because, um, as Megan just pointed out, we have a lot of sort of uh, legacy technologies and legacy information that we work with as archaeologists. 
And I think it's very important to go back every once in a while and just re-examine, recheck, wait, so we're a couple, you know, steps removed now from the proxies that my, you know, teacher was using. Are we still actually testing and looking for the same things? Are we still actually gathering the information we need to answer the questions we thought we were? Um, and I know that um, as someone who has been working on a PhD for quite a while now, I've had to go back to double check, hey, um, is this thing that my data is generating actually answering the questions I intended at the beginning? And sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. And just having that reminder of looking at our proxies again with fresh eyes, um, with regularity, I think is really, really important. Um, do you have any suggestions of additional works or related media that folks might uh, might be interested in if they read this book and they decide, yes, I need to know more about this and I'm going to start throwing this book at people's heads? Um, so I guess on the theme of throwing this book at people's heads, um, <laughs> I, I have um, one media recommendation. Uh, it's once again, a fictional work. Um, but I think it does a really great job of kind of accenting how sort of um, uh, societal problems can be mapped into algorithms. Um, and that is a comic book series called Bitch Planet by Kelly Sue DeConnick and Valentin Delandro, um, as well as some guest authors for their third volume. Um, it's not a complete series yet. Um, but basically, this is a world in which um, women who are deviant in any sort of fashion that you can think of, um, you know, uh, size, coloring, temperament, that sort of thing, uh, they basically are tried and shipped off to a place, a planet, a, a cologne, a uh, uh, carceral, 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 a carceral prison it's a prison planet it's a prison, it's a prison planet. Planet. It's a planet it's bitch planet um but it's a really it's it's really great it's a really um like a great illustration of like it's you know an extreme example in many of the these dystopic uh works are um but it's a, an extreme example of where sort of algorithms could go so for example um algorithms are heavily used in the justice system as that's touched on in weapons of math the destruction as well as in other books um and it could lead to that if it keeps feeding in the same data we, we could get into a system um that is not you know that far removed or even now if we replace um sort of uh, uh feminine practices with being brown or um you know uh, black cultural practices it's not dissimilar from that um as far as as far as sort of playlists um i i find that i like um thinking about these heavy data things as incorporated in our lives in creative ways um so some songs that i recommend are um rumors by uh, lizzo and cardi b um just in the sense of um kind of algorithms can pick up basically on this concept of rumors and keep perpetuating themselves um i'd also recommend Haley kiyoko's demons um, because it kind of talks about um, how uh, sort of um, if you take the demons as being algorithms that they continue to lie, lie to us about um, what these outcomes are. Um, Megan, um, along with your recommendations, um, do any of the recommendations or um, do you have specific thoughts on how uh, this book uh, relates back to what are data? Um, and some other books that you can recommend that fit that 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 aspect of the book. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think this this book very clearly ties into the you know what are what are data question um, because it talks about really in a way how um, how people have become data not necessarily with their consent. Um, and how aspects of our daily lives have become other people's data without uh, without our our knowing participation in the system. Um, uh, a book that I really uh, I don't know what I don't know if you want to say enjoyed, but uh, a book that I think is really important in this regard um, is uh, a book called uh, Queer Data uh, by Kevin Guyon. Um, which I read around the same time that we started talking about about uh, weapons of math destruction. Um, and I find it very interesting because some of the things that were earlier in um, in O'Neill's book are brought into uh, 
into queer data, looking at a very specific segments of the population and the way that uh, data collection, lack of data collection, uh, and how that data is is used, not used, have um, have impacted the lives of uh, of queer people and the creation of queer communities uh, and queer rights. Um, and I found that to be very interesting. Um, the the other one that I would suggest uh, as a it's a little bit out there, but as a musical connection to this, I found that um, when I was reading this reading weapons of mass destruction uh and when i was thinking when i think about algorithms um i tend to want to listen to something that is very loud that's just i think it's somehow it's it's about drowning out the the, the anger uh in my head um so i actually really enjoy listening to joy division related to this book because when you hear it initially you just hear a lot of noise but when you start to get into it you can see the way that these patterns are woven into the music and the way that things repeat and come back and, and fall in on themselves um and i think that there's a real like algorithmic sense to to their music that there's hidden there's hidden things in it that you may not realize you're responding to um until you really stop and think about it and you're really, then you're realizing you've been listening to something like this all day and that's a lot you want to give us another one sentence sum up of the book yeah um weapons of math the destruction um how big data increases inequality and threatens democracy um, is one of the first books to explore the impacts of big data on um, our lives, particularly in the United States. Um, and she brings in um, specifically how algorithms um, are basically reinforcing existing biases in um, American society. Um, if you are a little bit more interested um, on the, the human aspects of the data she mentions, specifically um, exploring things like um, sentencing data um, or where that comes from um, and are particularly um, interested in that, uh, books I would recommend along those lines are things like um, The Condemnation of Blackness, which explores the establishment of sociology and specifically of statistics um, examining sociology. Um, which are basically the bases for the algorithms that um, or some of the algorithms, algorithms that Kathy O'Neill and other data scientists explore, um, as well as um, policing the black man, um, which also explores uh, the prison system specifically and the biases inherent in that um, that have become algorithmically um, basically codified. Um, but uh, just as a uh, quick ending note, uh, we were just talking about weapons of math destruction, how big data increases inequality and threatens democracy uh, by Kathy O'Neill. Interesting book. Throw it at somebody that you uh, think needs to be educated. Mm -hmm. And you think will respond well to maths. Or having things thrown at them. <laughs> <laughs>